What is going on everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to episode 11 of the New Beginner Java Game Programming Tutorial Series. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about states. Now before I tell you what a state is and why they're very important in game programming, let's go through how our actual game is going to run and begin. So when the user first opens up our game, we're probably going to want to bring them to some type of main menu. And excuse my bad handwriting. So when they first open up our game, we're going to bring them to the main menu. And the main menu is going to have a few options. It's going to have a start button and it's going to have a settings button. So when they press the start button of our game, we want the main menu to disappear and we want them to actually begin playing our game. We want to actually show them the game and allow them to play it. But if they're on the main menu and they click the settings option, the settings button, then we want to make the main menu disappear and we want to bring them to a new menu which is going to allow them to change all the settings of the game, such as do they want to hear music or not, maybe um, how many frames per second do they want to run the game at, all that stuff. So the main menu has two options, start and settings. If they press start, we bring them to the game and allow them to play it. If they press settings, we bring them to the settings menu and allow them to change the settings of our game. And of course, you can add way more than this. This is just a very basic example. But as you can see, a game is made up of multiple parts. In this case, we have a main menu part, we have a settings part, and we have our actual game part. We call these states, mainly game states in game programming. So the main menu is a state, the settings menu is a state, and the game is a state. Now, why is this important? Well, instead of putting the code for the main menu and the settings menu and the game all in one class, that would be terrible, what we do is we put all the code for a single state in its own class. So the main menu state is going to have its own class for all of its code. The settings menu state is going to have its own class for all of its code. And the actual game state of our game, where you play the game, is going to have its own class for all of the game code. This will organize our game much better and make everything much more clean. So what we're going to do is we're going to put all the code for our main menu in its own class, all the code for the settings menu in its own class, and all the code for the game in its own class. That's what we want to do. So let's get on to actually programming these game states. Okay, so now we know what a state is. They're all the separate areas of our game. But all of these states are going to have a few things in common with one another. Every single state is going to have a tick method so it can update its variables. And every single state is also going to have a render method so it can draw itself to the screen. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to create a class that contains everything that every state must have. So we're going to create a class that contains all the variables and methods that every state is required to have. Let's go ahead and create that class and see how this works. Right click on your main package and go up to new class and we're going to name this class state and we're going to put it in the dot .states package of our game. Go ahead and click finish, and here we have it. Now this state class isn't going to be an ordinary class. It's going to be an abstract class, so public abstract class state. Now I'm assuming that you guys know what an abstract class is. If you don't, go ahead right now and look up a simple tutorial on abstract classes. You don't have to know the super technical details of what an abstract class, class is, just know what the basis of an abstract class is and how it works and abstract methods. Alright, so now that you know the basics of an abstract class, let's go ahead and create the things that are going to be in common with every single state, the things that every single state must have. Okay, so right now all we know is that every single state has two things in common, a tick and a render method. We're going to add a few more things in the far future, but for right now, we know that every single state is going to have to have a tick and a render method. So let's go ahead and create two abstract methods in our state class to represent those methods. So we're going to have a public abstract void method called tick. That'll be the tick method of every state. And we're also going to have a public abstract void method called render, which will be the render method of every single state. Now the render method is going to take in a graphics object, which we're just going to name G. Go ahead and import that, and here we go. So why are we taking in a graphics object, G? Well, remember, over here in our game class, we have a graphics object, which we call G, and this was our magical paintbrush. It allows us to draw to the screen. Well, we're going to have to pass this magical paintbrush through to our render method of a state. That way, the state is able to draw to the screen directly. So again, you'll see how this all comes together in just a few minutes and how to use it. So now let's create a class that's actually going to utilize the state. 
Right click on your state's package and go up to new class and name it game state. This state is probably going to be the most used state of your game. It's going to be where the actual gameplay is at, not the main menu or anything. So go ahead and create your game state class, and we have to do one thing before we can actually begin coding this class. We need to make this game state class extends the state class that we just created. Now when we do this, Eclipse gives us an error here. Why does it give us an error? Well, if we go into our state class here, we're going to realize that we have two abstract methods in it. An abstract void tick and an abstract void render method. What this says is, alright, any class that extends this state class must contain a tick method and a render method, or it's going to give you an error. So all we have to do is we have to put a tick and a render method in our game state and the error will go away. If you're using Eclipse, hover over the error and select add unimplemented methods and it'll do it for you, or you can type them in yourself. So now we have a tick and a render method in our game and the error goes away. I'm actually also going to add a constructor to our game state, a constructor method, because we're going to need that in the future. We're not going to need it now, but for right now, I'm just going to add it so that we don't forget to. Okay, so now our game state is essentially a state because it extends the game state. I'm sorry, it extends the state class, and we're required to have a tick and a render method in it, which we do. And by the way, don't worry about these at override methods here, that's just helpful for coding. If you want to learn what they are, definitely feel free to look them up, you don't have to have them. Okay, so now let's actually do something with our game state class here. In our render method, let's do g.drawImage, and we're going to draw, say, something from our assets class. I'm going to draw my dirt tile to the screen at uh, position 0, comma 0, and then null as the last parameter, as always. So whenever the render method of this game state class is called, it should render a dirt tile image to the screen. But there's a big problem. We are not calling any of this code or even creating an instance of our game state anywhere in our code. So let's go ahead and make something that will allow us to switch states and do that. What we're about to code right now is most often referred to as the game state manager. What we're about to code is basically going to hold the current state that we're on. Basically, what state should the game currently tick and render? Now, I'm going to write the code that we need for the game state manager in the state class itself. If you want to put it in a separate class, you can do that. I'm going to put it in the state class just because it makes more sense to me. But if you want to put it in a separate class, be my guest. So, down here I'm just going to make a comment because these two methods have nothing to do with the code we're about to write right here. Now, all we need to do is create a state object that will hold the current state of our game, and we have to add a few things that will allow us to get it from anywhere in our game and set it from anywhere in our game. That way we can change what state we're currently on. So we're going to create a private static, make sure it's static so we can access it from anywhere, state object, and I'm just going to name it current state. And I'm just going to initialize it to null to start, so basically initialize it to nothing. This current state object is going to hold what state we currently want to tick and render in our game. Next, we have to provide a way to set that current state. So we're just going to create a public static void set state method, which is going to take in a state object as a parameter. And all we have to do is set our current state variable equal to the state that was passed into this method. So if we call the set state method from anywhere in our game and we pass in a state to it, it's going to change what state the game currently ticks and renders and basically shows to the screen. We're also going to have a method to get the current state. So private static it's going to return a state, get state. And this is just going to return our current state. Now again, these all this code right here has nothing to do with the abstract part of the state class at all. If you created this in another separate class, it doesn't even have to be an abstract class because it's all static and we can access it from anywhere in our game and we don't use abstract anywhere in it. So again, you can think of this as kind of like a separate class. Again, you can put it in a separate class if you wanted to. So all this does is store a current state object and we're able to set it and get it via these two methods that we created. All right, that's essentially a, a very, very simple game state manager. Now let's finally, finally put this to use. In our game state here, I'm going to put a few, I'm going to put a comment called states, and this is where I'm going to initialize all my states. So I'm going to have a, I'm going to make them private for now. I, uh, yeah, I'll make it private. So we're going to have a private state, which I'm going to call game state. And over here in our init method, we are going to set, after we initialize our assets, we're going to set game state equal to a new game state. Now, wait a minute, why are we able to do this? By the way, import that. 
Um, make sure you import your own class, by the way. All right. So why are we able to do this? We have a state object called game state, and then we set it to a new game state, not just regular state. Well, because our game state class extends the state class, we're able to initialize it as a regular state, but I'm sorry, we're able to declare it as a regular state, but initialize it to a game state. This is very important that we are able to do this. That way it'll work with the game state manager because remember, the game state manager, this code right here, as a state object. That means we have to initialize all our states to be a state, but we can initialize them to anything we want. Or, I'm sorry, declare everything as a state, but initialize them to anything we want. All right, let's continue on. After this, we're gonna do state dot, whoops, state dot set state to the game state. So this will set the current state of the game, the current state that we want to tick and render to our new game state object that we just created. And then down here, I'm going to delete this temporary x variable and all these temporary code that we wrote in the last tutorial, as well as this draw image here. And we are just going to, in the tick method, say, all right, if our state class, if our game state, the get state, doesn't equal null, this is very, very important. If our game state doesn't equal null, that means, all right, we have a, st a current state that actually exists, then we want to do, all right, state, the get state, dot tick and that'll call the tick method of our current state. Go ahead and copy this code and put it right down here, right below where we clear the screen in the render method. We're going to do the same thing. If state.getState isn't null, if it actually exists, then we want to render it, and we're going to pass in the graphics object, g. Now, this if statement is very important because if our, game, if our state, if the current state in our game state here ever equals null, notice how we initialize it to null to start, then it's going to throw an error if it tries to do it and it equals null still. So checking if it doesn't equal null will allow us to prevent any big errors. Again, I'm going to go over this code very, very quickly at the end of the tutorial. Hopefully that was all clear to understand, but if we go ahead and run our game now, we get our dirt tile displayed to the screen because in our game state, I'm displaying a dirt tile. Sweet, we now have states working. I encourage you guys to try and figure out how to create multiple states, create maybe a menu state, a game state, maybe a setting state. You don't have to add anything to them yet. We're going to be doing that in the future, but try and figure out and make sure you understand how these states work. All right, let's do a very, very, very quick recap for anyone who needs it. So the real part I'm going to recap, however, is just this game class and the state class. Remember, this stuff right here I'm referring to as the game state manager. It has nothing to do with this abstract class or the game state or anything. All this does is store an object called current state, and that's the current state we want to tick and render. In our game class here, we set the state to our game state that we just initialized here. And in our tick method, we check if the current state, if state.get state, if basically our current state here, doesn't equal null, if it exists, then tick. And we do the same thing for render. If it exists, then render every frame. This will call the render and tick methods of your respective state class in which the current state is pointing to. And uh, I'm, again, I'm hoping that this all made sense. Any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'm having fun making this tutorial series. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.